Endothelium is the inner layer of cover of the blood vessels and it normally uh, functions to regulate the uh, normal blood flow and, uh, and the health of the blood vessel by releasing um, positive uh, substances that maintain uh, the antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-thrombotic and the normal flow of the blood vessels. However, um, in response to uh, risk factors or any other injury of the blood vessel, um, the first layer of cells that actually uh, interact between the circulation and the blood vessel uh, is the endothelial cell layer and they uh, become dysfunction, uh, which means that they are unable to maintain the vascular health. And by doing that, uh, they actually uh, lose, lose the regulation to maintain flow, uh, lose their uh, ability to uh, prevent uh, oxidative stress and inflammation, and by that allowing uh, the progression and the initia initiation of disease uh, of atherosclerosis, what's called the hardening of the artery. Well, one of the issues with, uh, is with endothelial uh, dysfunction, as you, as you elucidated, uh, endothelial dysfunction is currently known uh, as a marker for early stage of the disease. And it no, was known from um, other previous studies that the presence of endothelial dysfunction, whether it's measured invasively or non-invasively, is an independent predictor of a cardiac event. The challenge in the last several years was to uh, uh, be able to integrate this concept into our clinical practice and to be able to assess this uh, uh, phenomenon or this or function of the endothelium um, in a simple, non-invasive, uh, low-cost uh, uh, test that each one can integrate into their uh, practice, if you may say so, in order to assess the vascular health of the patient beyond the traditional uh, risk factors. Studies mainly focus on, on, the, on the population that are considered uh, not high risk, and the, the way you define that is by the, uh, looking at their profile of risk factors and determine what their Framingham risk score, which usually divided the patient to low, intermediate, and high risk. So this group of patients are, are uh, divided to, uh, mainly in the low intermediate and low risk of Remigen risk score. Uh, the study is a com combined of study of two centers, uh, the Mayo Clinic and the uh, Tuff University. And uh, we uh, look at 270 patients that uh, are, as I indicated, are in the intermediate and low risk of the Remigen risk score. And uh, we measure their non-invasive endothelial function by using uh, in a novel um, a device uh, uh, that's called Endopat uh, from Itamar Medical, which is a uh, FDA-approved device to measure endothelial function. Uh, so this device is uh, uh, simply to use, simple, very simple to use, and it actually uh, uses a blood pressure cuff to create what we call reactive hyperemia, uh, which is uh, uh, indicated to, to si stimulate and trigger and look at the endothelial function. And we look at the two probes that are placed on the finger, and that measure us for us the flow to the fingers which indicative uh, in the response to the blood pressure cuff uh, response uh, and the measurement of endothelial function. So in this study we took these 270 patients and we measure endothelial function in, in these two centers in baseline and we follow these uh, uh, individuals for five to seven years and the major finding of the study that the presence of low index of this uh, reactive hyperimate baseline was a highly predictive of a cardiovascular event in the future. Uh, mainly talking about major and cardiovascular events such as uh, cardiac mortality, myocardial infarction, revascularization, and hospitalization for cardiac causes. So in summary, uh, this uh, non-invasive uh, simple uh, device can be uh, uh, used to, uh, to predict uh, the cardiac event in this uh, intermediate to low risk patient population. Normal function of the endothelium, when, 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 you, when you put a blood pressure cuff on the patient's hand and you inflate the cuff for uh, high pressure and you actually uh, cause uh, absence of flow to the finger for about five minutes, when you release the cuff, the normal response is uh, overflow or, over, or hyperemia or reactive hyperemia which is uh, overshooting on the flow after the, uh, the release of the cuff. So this is normal function. And this indicates a normal function of the endothelium. That's known for years. Uh, the absence of this overshooting or, over, or reactive hyperemia is indicative for endothelial dysfunction. So if, you have, if we do this test and you have a normal response, and in this test, specific test from, from this device, we have control of the other arm, which serves as a control in the same patient, uh, so the presence of reactive hyperemia or the overshooting of the flow after you release the blood pressure cuff 
is indicator of endothelium, normal uh, function of the endothelium, or what we call normal vas vascular health. However, if we lose this ability to overshoot that or to, to have this reactive hyperemic response, this is a marker for endothelial dysfunction that tells us that there is some abnormalities of the function of the endothelium that may indicate uh, 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 some uh, problem with the vascular health. I think if you talk about a uh, uh, relatively low risk population, uh, this is a pretty good predictive uh, uh, marker which is goes beyond um, beyond the traditional risk factors. So if you see a patient and you, t you talk to the patient and, uh, and you rest assess the risk factors, uh, um, it may be in the future you will be able to uh, individualize the risk uh, of the patient by doing s very several tests that not only tells you what the risk factors are, but what's the actually effect of the risk factors on the of this specific patient. Uh, what we call the, the endothelial dysfunction is actually, we call it the risk of the risk factors, which means it translates the, the traditional risk factors to actually actual disease, which is the effect on the vascular wall. I mean, traditional risk factors by themselves <coughs> are only markers. The way they are associated with event is by creating a disease, which they do by, by mediating endothelial dysfunction. So uh, we believe that this test will allow us to more uh, 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 stratify and discriminate patients that are at higher risk for, for event, which may uh, in, in the future uh, or in the now uh, will modify the way you treat this patient. I think the next step, uh, uh, this test is currently not, uh, we're not saying that this is, should be a, a wide uh, screening test. And uh, we, we don't think that this is a, a reach this point. But uh, uh, it's possible that further studies are needed to see if this uh, <coughs> simple test can be used as an adjuvant test to the regular and routine test that people are using to stratify and, uh, and assess patient risk. So I think the future study is going to be one uh, to uh, co push the concept of uh, individual risk assessment, which is one of the concepts of individual medicine. Uh, to, to develop a more therapeutic strategies. You can assume that the presence of endothelial dysfunction, irrelevant or relevant to the risk factors, may, uh, uh, may, may trigger a different therapy that, and also using the presence of endothelial function testing to monitor the therapy. Uh, recent studies that came out in the Journal of American Cardiology of Cardiology uh, several months ago indicate that if you treat patient and you improve their endothelial function, they have less less event in the future than the patient did you treat the same way but endothelial dysfunction maintained. So the presence of endothelial function testing not only will allow you to change and modify your treatment for this particular patient but also monitor uh, the effect of the treatment. Are you actually doing the right treatment for this specific patient or you need to modify it?